Tomahawk TV News, Montec County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Welcome back to Tomahawk TV News. I'm your host, Victoria Destratus. And I'm your co-host, Caden Manish, bringing you the latest in local news. This week, we have a Tomahawk Sports where Blake and Paco will be bringing you some local basketball and NFL Super Bowl news. Following that, we have a gaming review on the state of decay with Garrett and Brady and this week's NHS Gamer. Our weekly weather report is brought to you by Omen Nelson. Then we have Meme This with Chris XL, where Chris will reenact the desk meme. Following that, we will have a tasty segment brought to you by The Cooking Chicks, Chastity in Brooklyn, where you will get a look at some peanut butter snickle, snickerdoodle cookies. Up first is Victoria with this week's Indian Insight, where she will be interviewing members of the narrative film team about their upcoming contest. Welcome back to this week's Indian Insight. We have an interview with Hannah Dyer and her filmmates who have recently turned in their narrative for the UIL Young Filmmakers Contest. Um, knowing that the animation won first and second in state is really nerve-wracking to me because I want this film to do good, but I'm kind of scared that if it's not gonna do as well as theirs. I don't wanna ruin the story, but that's my birthday. I have high hopes that this is going to be a very well-received show. The narrative is very different. We watched the ones that won last year and all the ones that ranked highly last year, and there was one similar, kind of, to ours, but ours has a lot of different elements in it. Like, it has a good story, it has all the trippy stuff, it has all the nice effects in it, and it's a really... I, it's something that you won't forget. The first idea we had for this started off as a joke. Like we were like, let's do this uh, desensitized family where a ghost is haunting them. And so we decided that it would be good for that. Like that would be funny, like a dark comedy. But then we decided let's really hit the judges. I have done everything you've suggested and not a single thing has worked. I used to I used to feel this unbearable pain all the time. What drove me was because we wanted ours to stick out. When you watch the movie, it's a really pretty opening shot. Then we see this glitch in it, so it kind of like catches you and you're like, what is this? And it intrigues the audience. Jumping into this project that had already started was, it was pretty difficult because we had to learn everything that had already happened and that they had put into making it in the summer. Like we didn't even know what the story was at first. And there was a lot of challenges because we would all do different things of what we expected it to be. Whenever Hannah wrote it and how she pictured it was different from each of ours. So there was a lot of different points of view that went into it. And in the end, that's how we ended up making it. So we were like halfway through editing the film and uh, I kind of just, I, me and uh, Brennan had this idea where we kind of wanted the, them to have, the characters to have more, like, for you to, to see how they were closer. Before all this happened, before the stuff that you see in the storyline happened. To see how close they were and why she was so distraught over her loss. So uh, we went out after school one day to the park and we got some shots of them playing on the merry-go-round and sliding down slides and holding hands and all that. My favorite shot it's probably the very last one right before the credits come up, whenever you see them holding hands, walking into the sunset. My shot. If they would have actually walked into the sunset and not off to the side. My favorite shot is uh, when she's sitting at the dinner table and uh, you kind of hear like the spoons and like forks like clanging on the plates. It's kind of like, it's like the, the camera's coming in, but it's also pulling away and then there's a, uh, there's like flashes of Kelsey behind her, and I just think it looks really cool. Welcome back to another edition of Tomahawk Sports. I'm Paco. And I'm Boyk. And we're here to supply you with the latest and greatest sports news of the week. Starting off the new year strong, 
In local news, the Nakona Indians took a dub against Sanger on Monday, with the final score being 67-50. to Four Nakona players had double-digit points in this victory, and the top scorer of the night was Jason Sparkman with a total of 18 points. The victory makes their overall record 12-8. and In national news, the NFL Super Bowl is slowly approaching us. Super Bowl 53 will be played on February 3rd, and for now, we can just guess who's going to make it. Who do you think is going to make it to the Super Bowl? The Cowboys and Patriots. All right, so I'm here with Chris XL. I'm going to ask him who does he think he's going to make the Super Bowl. Uh, the Pizza Hut? Pigs? Okay. I'm here with Miguel. Who do you think is going to make the Super Bowl? Uh, I don't know. I think the Cowboys probably. You, you never know. Anyways, the Super Bowl is always the most highly anticipated sporting event of the year, and hopefully the team you're rooting for will make the Super Bowl. Personally, I think the Rams and Patriots play in the Super Bowl, but you never know. Maybe, just maybe, the Cowboys can clutch up and make it to the Super Bowl this year. Now it's time for our Sports Fellow of the Week. The Bears are down by one point. Field goal for the win. Oh, 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 he missed by a hair. You can't really give him much hate being under that much pressure. He already previously scored nine of the Bears' 15 points. It's okay, Cody Parkey. You'll come back next year. Well, that's all we have for this week's segment on Tomahawk Sports. I'm Paco. And I'm Blake. Signing off for Tomahawk Sports. Welcome back to another NHS Gamer. I'm Brady, and this week I'll be going over State of Decay 2. This game starts by you choosing a team of two people. From there, you're dropped into a scenario of a horde of zombies chasing you. They then corner you into a military outpost, or so you think. The base had been abandoned and overwhelmed by zombies. You find two more survivors, one active military and one a nurse. You then go on to find a home of operations. You have the option to switch between different characters, and depending on what you want to do, it might be smart to change characters, especially if you go after a plague heart, because you don't want to risk losing your best character for one plague heart. Some of you may be wondering, what is a plague heart? Well, a plague heart is like a hot zone for the disease that infects you to become a zombie. And the closer you get to one, the more plague zombies you see, because not all zombies can turn you into one, but plague, plague zombies can. Once you destroy them all, the game finishes and you complete it. Along the way, you should help other communities so that you are well-liked towards the end. We here at the studio enjoyed this game, and would definitely encourage you to purchase it or get the Game Pass so you can enjoy it too. Till next time, this is Brady, logging off. Hi, and welcome to the weather. I'm Omen Nelson. Here to tell you the weekly forecast. Wow! Let's start off and say, wow! It's 2019. You know what that means? More weekly weather! Wow! Now for the weather forecast. Wow! We have a mixture this week. Monday will be 43 and sunny. Tuesday will be 47 and partly cloudy. Wednesday will be 39 and partly cloudy. Thursday will be 47 and partly cloudy. Wow! Friday, which is the high for the week, is 70 and partly sunny. That's the forecast for this week. Now for the field report. Thank you, Almond. Wow! It's really cold out here. I should have brought my parka. Wow, was that a mistake. Ooh, all the Texans are in hibernation right now, but not me. I gotta do weather. This sucks. That's all I have here. Back to you. Wow, Ben Steeler, what are you doing here? We gotta go make a new Booze Ender movie. But I'm doing the weather right now. I said in two years, we would make another one. It's been three years. I'm at four. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, let's go back to Omen with the field report. Thank you, Omen. Wow, it's colder over here than it is over there. I mean, if it gets any colder, 
I'm gonna go on strike. And then I'm probably gonna get to Cal- go to California. Oh man, Texas has gone downhill since I was born. Mm, why can't there be any hot winds, per se? Well, I mean, besides the stuff that comes out of your mouth. Sing! Wow, that was a good joke. Well, that's all I have here for today. Back to you, Omen. Hi, I'm Van Steeler. Omen had to step out because of personal reasons. Wow, my head! Get back down. Unfortunately, this is Omen's last day. He will be replaced for next week. That's all for this week. I'm Van Steeler, signing off. That's my line! Shut up. (laughs) See you next week. What's up? It's me, Chris XO here, back with this week, Meme This. Today we're going to be doing two memes. Some things might hurt, but I will do whatever it takes to make y'all laugh. Here's our last meme. I feel bad for that kid. Not really. That's all for this week, meme this. See you next week. Welcome back to this week's segment of The Cooking Chicks. We are making peanut butter cookies. We were going to make a low calorie keto chocolate peanut butter cookie, but we could not find the ingredients at our local grocery store. Turns out the only flour they carry is wheat and not coconut. And they don't even carry the brown wheat, which is actually better for you than the bleached white wheat, which was the only thing they carried. The ingredients we are going to need are one package Betty Crocker peanut butter cookie mix, one egg, three tablespoons vegetable oil, and one tablespoon water. Heat the oven to 375 degrees, 300 for dark or nonstick cookie sheets. For regular cookies, bake them to 8 to 10 minutes. For large cookies, bake them to 9 to 11 minutes. Mix cookie mix, oil, water, and egg in a medium bowl until soft dough forms. Shape the dough into 36 balls. You want them to be about an inch. You can also make the balls using teaspoons and place them two inches apart. Flatten the dough using a fork in a crisscross pattern. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
All right. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> I are warm. Fresh out of the oven. Pretty tasty. Thank you. All right. Those are good. That is all for this week of The Cooking Chicks. Join us next time for more cooking. Well, that's all we have for this week's Tomahawk TV News. Be sure to tune in next time for more sports, weather, gaming reviews, memes, cooking, and local stories. Thanks for watching.